Welcome to the channel everyone. Today we are going to be replacing a fuel pump on a 2002 Nissan Xterra. Mine has a little bit of a problem. It is leaking a little bit I think inside the tank. It is losing pressure a little bit. Uh, but I picked this one up here for about $24. This is a plug and play. You don't have to cut any wires or anything. You plug the original one in right here and they give you the hose that you gotta kind of slide on like that. And there is a clamp here that you can uh, use or you can use your own kind of clamp uh, to stick on here. But this is what we're going to be doing today. This fuel pressure uh, pump, uh, it's all one piece here. It's all inside. It has a little bit of a regulator in here. It keeps the uh, fuel from draining back into the tank. And also you got a secondary fuel pump regulator up here under the engine. But other than that, this is what we're going to do today. All right, so on my Nissan here, there's a hose that goes from here to here. This was actually all one piece one time. Uh, it had a problem right here where the connector is. It started leaking. It wouldn't stop. It was corroded, so we just put one big piece on here. Now, I just shut this engine off. This hose should still be under pressure, but I can go ahead and release this hose a little bit. And there's no pressure on this line hardly whatsoever. As you can see there, just a little bit of a drip coming out. Now, I think this is probably part of my PO300 code that I've got. I've seen this before when you have a weak fuel pump, when the fuel pump isn't pressuring up 100% like it should be throughout the whole uh, cycle of the engine running, shutting it off and all that. You will get a random misfire. But that is different from a misfire code when you have a code for one particular cylinder. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to go ahead and change out this uh, fuel pump. And it might take care of my issue. And the second reason is, um, the reason I'm going to change this fuel pump is this Nissan has over uh, 200,000 miles on it. I don't know if this is the original fuel pump or not for no more than it costs. And it's pretty easy to get to the fuel pump. I might as well go ahead and change it out. That way, if I sell it later, I can guarantee that the other person, whoever is going to buy it, will have a really good fuel pump in this vehicle. So, and also it's good security for me while I'm driving it right now. All right, so we'll go ahead and tighten this back up. And we'll make sure everything's tight and we'll go ahead and start replacing this fuel pump and uh, After we, you do a fuel line like this after you drive it a few days always come back and recheck these clamps because sometimes when this rubber gets a little soft These clamps will start to lose a little bit of a grip you usually have to come back out and clamp them down just a little bit longer Especially when they're over the engine like this and the second thing is it's good to get some kind of insulating line to slide over this so this fuel does not vaporize inside this hose uh, I've seen this a lot of times you'll have hard starting in the summer the uh, fuel will get vapor locked in the engine and it'll just be hard to crank to start so it's always good to get some kind of insulation to put over this they, they make all kinds online tubing that you can just slide over this all right so let's go ahead and get the battery disconnected doesn't matter negative or the hot cable make sure it's completely out of the way because we do not want any sparks back there by that gas tank when we have the cap the lid off of it on the top Kind of cold, but the sun's out. So my fuel pump excess, luckily. Now I wish every vehicle was like this in the world, but you know how that goes. It's under the seat right here. So we got the seat up out of here. And there's a panel right here that we will have to take off. As you see right there. And we got these four uh, bolts, nuts we got to take off. So we'll go ahead and take that off first. And before you ask, I did have a gauge on the fuel line here. I got some gauges. I made a homemade setup, and I did put pressure on the system. It did hold pressure fairly well while the engine was running, but as soon as I shut it off, the gauge did drop down. I didn't make a video of that because I didn't think you'd find it very interesting, but that's how I confirmed that I was losing fuel pressure on the system. You may have to do something a little bit different to yours, depending on what car you have in order to get into the fuel line system. All right, first thing we gotta do is get these little uh, bolts out here. These are 10 millimeter. There's four of these. I've never had this plate off before, so I'm not sure what I'm going to find under here. I hope it's not all rusted out and uh, hard to get to because uh, I've had some vehicles like that. But this frame is in really good shape, and the body's almost in perfect shape. So hopefully that'll give me some clue what we're going to be dealing with here. There's one. Two, number three, and we'll get the last one down here on the bottom. And there's the last one, number four. 
Put these off the side. Up comes the plate. And uh, well, we got one more plate we got to take off here. Forgot about this one. So we got three screws here that we have to take off. And these are the same size also. Should have got my power tools today. Which one? And number three, so there's that one. Now we got this wire that we're going to have to snake down through here. All right, you know what? To push that probably down right here. All right, just do yourself a favor and just push this down. That way you can pull this plate, slide it up out of the way, so you can actually get into the plugs here. And all right, so there's one plug. Tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spray some oil on them real quick. All right, spray some WD-40 down there. All right, so I got this back clip off, just about ready. All right, so that one's off. And here comes this one. And it looks like it's partially snapped right there. What are you gonna do, you know? All right, so we'll pull this off the side, and that's eh, pretty dirty, so I might go ahead and clean this up first. Take the vacuum cleaner to it, get all this out of here. Go ahead and put some oil, spray, uh, spray some WD-40 on these connectors, get them kind of freed up a little bit. We have one, two, three, four, five, six little tiny screws here that we have to take out then this whole piece should pop off. But we got to go ahead and get these uh, clips here greased up first. All right, so I got the big one here loose. All right, there's that one. And you can see there's the clip. And now I got to get this one off. Slowly going. All right, so they're the same size. So the yellow one goes over here. One's high pressure and one is return in most vehicles you'll see one of these will be larger than the other one will be a return and the other one will be high pressure but this one's the same so I just kind of make a men mental mark of where it goes mentally so now we got this here out of the way and we'll get the vacuum cleaner actually you can just kind of push this back out of the way like that now I'm gonna get the vacuum cleaner and clean all this out now we've got to take out these little screws here. They have very fine threads, so uh, putting these back in, you have to be careful. And I'm surprised just how small these are. I guess they made them where the rust could not form on the end of them, so they would be a, not be a problem uh, getting these out of the tank, because we all know how rust forms around these rings and stuff. So these go directly into the tank, but these are very small. We're on our last one here. These are seven millimeter. And before it comes out, just take your socket and move it around a little bit, kind of break it free from the socket itself because they like to stick with all that dirt and rust. And now we'll go ahead and take this out. And there's the last one, a little tiny thing. And now we'll go ahead and pop this ring off. It should come off fairly easy. All right, so that's out. Okay, now before we go ahead and pop this ring off, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more and I suggest you do the same thing. There'll be some more debris here from that ring. Get all this cleaned up. You don't want nothing falling back into the tank. Just take your time at it. All right, so here we go. I'm not sure what we're gonna find or see. But surprisingly, it came right out, and now we're going to lift it up. Now, this is going to be kind of tedious getting this out. You kind of got to work around a couple things here. You got to kind of turn it sideways and all that. So, okay, now as I hold this up a little bit, if I take my flashlight and shine down the tank, right down there is the fuel pump. I'm going to make a little hook. There is a little clip that you can get your wire on and that will release that and that'll allow us to bring a whole fuel pump up 
with this entire assembly. So I'm just going to take a clothes hanger and make a little hook and we'll fish that out of there real quick. All right, so here's my wire hook. It's just a little old clothes hanger and I don't think you're going to be able to see me do this, but I'm going to do this like this, take a light and I apologize. There's just not a lot of room here, but you get the idea. And uh, all I'm going to do is stick my hook there and pull up and there it is. It's Got it? Pretty easy to do. All right, now I'll go ahead and pull this up a little bit here. And you kind of have to fool around with it there. Wiggle it until it starts to come loose a little bit. And you can see it's coming up slowly. And as you see here, we've got it up about as far as it'll go. Now I'll take you a bungee cord, hook it right here, and just kind of wrap it around your seat belt over there. Hold this up because what we got to do next is go ahead and disconnect these two lines here. And there's a wire. Then we can pull this separate piece here on out. All right, for your viewing pleasure, we'll go ahead and disconnect the power one here. All right, we'll get that off the side. Now we got these two lines. Make sure you remember which way they go. The collared one here, the, uh, the lighter collared one goes on the inside and the darker one goes on the outside. Now we gotta release these two clips here. And this one here can be a little bit of a pain to get. All right, so we'll get the middle one here. I usually take a pair of needle nose and just get in here and squeeze the top of this and wiggle this. It should come down and out. All right, there it is. All right, so we got that one out. And now we gotta get this last one here. This one's a little tougher. Okay, so sometimes, you know, YouTubers, they make things seem like it's really easy to do. Well, I'm not that way. I'm going to show you sometimes you run into problems. Now, I cannot get this loose, and I don't want to take a chance of breaking it. So, at this point, if you cannot get this loose like I've run into, this will slide up a little bit more once you get a few things here unhooked. Just go ahead and take the fuel pump out right now. Pull it up. Have some rags on standby. And leave the uh, silver in or the uh, light colored one in let it drip down the tank get the excess fuel out and we'll go ahead and just change out the fuel pump right here because a lot of times if you end up breaking this and you're going to have to get this whole assembly unit so really all we needed to do was to go in here and change out this pump which is right here in this housing and also just make sure you have plenty of rags on standby that way you can clean up any fuel that gets uh, lost at this point. So all we have to do now is go ahead and release the fuel pump from this housing right here. And the way we do that, we just go over here and we push in on these clips like this. Open this up just like that. And there's our whole fuel pump assembly. We'll pull it out of its housing. We have a clip here we unhook. And we'll just simply slide this out of the bottom here. So at this point, we take our screwdriver back here and we kind of pry off our sock, our filter. I want to make sure I get every shot for you guys. So we'll put this off to the side. And now I'm going to take my clippers here and I'm going to go ahead and cut this here off right here. Because we are going to need to take this one here off. Because the one we got with our original fuel pump is a little bit shorter. We're going to reuse this one here. And we'll go ahead and hook the wire, power wire, right here. And all right, so there are our two fuel pumps the silver one, the newer one, the gold one, the one we just took out, and they are identical. And here is the hose that they gave me with the newer one. It would probably work. I go ahead and reuse the original one because it does have a lot of extra play in it, which I like. This here is pretty tight. Putting it in might give me a little bit of a, uh, a tight fit, but I think. For now, I'll just go ahead and put this one on back on for now. All right, so we'll take this little cap here off for our filter. And we'll go ahead and take this off here. And like I said, some of these clips you can reuse if you uh, know how to reuse them. But since I have a new one, we'll just reuse that for now. Get this off out of the way. All right, so this is coming off. Now, the trick is if you can't get this off and it's cold, put just a little bit of heat on it, not very much. Just warm it up a little bit, and this should slide off like that. Now we can reuse our original hose. But in the meantime, this is a good fuel pump. We'll put it back in a box, stick it in the glove box, and if we ever have a problem down the road, we'll have a backup fuel pump, and if somebody else needs one, well, you can make maybe 10 bucks. All right, so there's our new one. We'll take our little black nipple off. 
Here's the clip that we got with our new one. We'll slide that on. We'll go ahead and slide this on like this. And it goes on pretty easy. I like it when a plan comes together. And now we'll go ahead and squeeze this clamp together and we'll tighten this down. And just like that, we have a nice tight clamp on our line and it's not going to go anywhere and it should work out really nice so now all we have to do is go ahead and put our screen on which is real easy to do just kind of push that back one like that nice and secure put our pump back in our housing here okay so remember how the fuel pump went in but i'll go ahead and show you anyway there are tabs right here and a tab right there and you can see how this is kind of set up and i'll hold this a second so you can pause the video and so you can kind of get a look there I think you can see that and now we'll go ahead and push this in like this and you can see it's a nice snug fit and finally as you see here i've got the filter on and do yourself a uh, favor one more favor at least get yourself a zip tie put it around here and kind of do this because i know there are clips on here that will hold this but when you're putting this back down the tank it doesn't take much to squeeze this for this top piece to pop off now if you do squeeze this and tries to pop off it's not going to come off because you got a zip tie here so other than that we're ready to drop this back in all right before we go ahead and drop this in make sure you hook up your power wire nothing like finding out you forgot to hook it up when it pumps back down in there and you hear it click and we are ready to go ahead and drop this back in now Here's the ugly part. Uh, you will have to go ahead and drop this back down in the tank with your hand. You can wear some gloves or whatever, but uh, just so you know, you're going to get some gasoline on your hands. This just kind of goes back down in there, and there's the clip that it kind of sets down in. Once you drop this down in there, you'll probably feel it kind of seat in there, and you'll probably feel it kind of go click because there's a little clip right there. I think you can kind of see that. It kind of hangs in there on another clip down there, and that's what keeps this down in there. So uh, let's go ahead and get this in. All right, so we'll go ahead and drop this in. Not the best angle, but this is the best I can do. But you'll get the idea here as I put my hand down in there and drop that down in there. All right, I've got a light. And remember, no sparks, folks. Absolutely no sparks. Make sure your battery is disconnected because you don't want to have a bad day. So we'll go ahead and drop this in there like this. There's lots of room once this is out of the way. And kind of like that. And we'll kind of watch our wires here and stuff. Don't let them get too hung up. And it's already down in there, so it looks like I'm ready to snap it in. Now I am going to go ahead and release the tension on this bungee cord, so this will drop down just a little bit lower. This will allow that to go down in there a little bit farther and we can push our pump housing back down in there. All right, I think we got it in there. I'm just kind of feeling with my hand and all right, there we go, it clicked. All right, so this here will try your patience, but this is the only option you have if you can't get that hose off. And I think you can see there how the uh, pump is sitting in there. And all I have to do is run my wire up to here and that other hose and we're done. But um, take a flashlight and shine in there and get an idea where that clip goes. And once you kind of set that pump in there at an angle, it kind of sits, a C. see, the pump sort of sits at an angle like this. It doesn't sit flat. It sits at an angle, and when it slides down over that hook down there, you'll feel click. It may take several tries, but you can do it. And it's tight. You've got to kind of hold this like this and get your hand up down in there. But if you have a long arm... Uh, you can do it so just take your time at it then once you get that done you're done all you gotta do is hook that wire up there and the other hose and we're done and we can wrap this job up so that's one way you can do this now if you have a special tool or whatever it takes here i'm not sure why i could not get that off i didn't want to break it if you pop that off and you can pull this plastic piece clear out it's a lot easier to put that pump back in then you drop this in then you can hook all this back up this is a little harder but if you run into the problem and you cannot get that hose off there, then this is one way you can do it. So just so you know. All right, on this side, I think you can see we got our clip there, wire hooked up. Don't forget to hook that up, that's your power wire. Now all we gotta do is go on the other side and slip the hose on and we're done. And here's probably one of the harder shots I've done today. So I've got that hose there. I think you can see that if I shine the light, something like this. 
now we'll go ahead and slide this up it's the back one right here in the back and there it's on I think you can see it there this one right there my thumb is right about there so it's tight but I got it on so we're done so all we gotta do is bolt everything back together and uh, start the vehicle up and see how it's going to run and also make sure our fuel gauge works and when you put this back in make sure you kind of take it easy because there's the float is on here your gas gauge and all that and uh we're pretty much done and just kind of clean up your seal a little bit before you bolt everything back together so you don't have any leaks or anything all right and just one final thing here this is just how i did it you may get lucky and be able to get that black hose off back there and if you can you can pull this whole unit here out then pull the pump out replace your pump Put it back in and put this back in it's a lot easier but with all this connected it's kind of hard to work around and i just stick my hand down there quite a ways just so you know this is just how i did it you may get lucky and everything may work out just fine for you you may be able to get that hose off there with no problem and uh, continue working just like you planned okay so we'll finish up here and we'll put in our eight millimeter screws and now we'll go ahead and hook up our fuel lines these on here all right there's one and we'll get our second one here turn that clip a little bit orientation with the hose slide this up on there like that push on it and we got it the clip and make sure they are on there tight pull them off a little bit on the hose make sure it can't come off and now we'll hook up our wires and we're going to leave our plate with the wires so we don't have to pull these wires off a second time because there's, there's always a chance you'll end up breaking the clips and we'll push this one on like that and it's on and now all we gotta do is go ahead and see if the car will run and we'll go ahead and connect our battery back up tighten this down this is a 10 millimeter nut and now we're ready to start the car all right so the moment of truth here Let's see what we got we'll cycle the key on a couple of times and we'll see if the fuel pump's working and the gauge is working. The gauge moves, so that's about what I had for fuel. And let's go ahead and start it up. How about that? Yes, start right up. I love it. All right, so we did everything correctly. We checked our hoses here. Everything's tight. No leaks. And I'll drive this for a few days, and we'll see if it takes care of the P0 300 code that I've had on here for a few weeks, but it is idling fairly nicely, so. Sounds good, and we'll go back here, and we'll check for leaks. Hopefully we don't have any. No leaks. And one final step here, we'll just go ahead and take our old pump, and we'll keep this, this will be a backup. We'll put it in our glove box, and this will be something that we'll have in the future in case we have any problems. So there we go, and we're done, my friends. All right, so that plate is on, and now we'll put our cover back on. All right, so that's done. Put our cover on and grab our seat. And we can wrap this video up and call it a job done. All right, she's been running for about 20 minutes and she sounds good. And our video would not be complete unless we do a fuel pressure check. And here is the old one. And now we're just going to set the camera up here and we're going to see what kind of fuel pressure we got on this. Now the old test I did with the old uh, fuel pump. I was only getting about 45 to 50 pounds. I don't know how well you're going to see this, but I'll zoom in a little bit. And now I'm going to go inside and crank on it. Straight up and down, right about there is 100 pounds. So I should have about 60 pounds or higher. Uh, we'll see where, where it goes here. So let me go crank over the engine. All right, there you go. It's pretty incredible. The engine tried to run there for a few seconds with no fuel 
And it looks like we got about 90 pounds and we're gonna wait about 10 minutes here and see if it drops off any. So that's really good. So uh, we'll see how well this is holding pressure now. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and we're still, uh, this may be about 85, 90 pounds, so we're good. And you can see, I pulled this off. There's the other uh, line that I cut off the other end. So, uh, so we're holding really good fuel pressure now, so that's really great. And just a side note, in reality, if you wanted to, you could reconnect this line like this, cut this here, put a T on it, and run another line to your gauge and watch this fuel pressure as your engine is running. So if you're not 100% completely convinced that you uh, have a leak somewhere, then you could actually do that and watch this fuel gauge as the engine is running and shut it off and see if it's holding fuel pressure. If it drops a lot, then you may actually have a fuel pressure regular that's bad or something like that. But this is just one way to verify that your uh, fuel pump is working like it should be. And you can see we're still 85 pounds about 20 minutes later here. So that's great. All right, guys. So I'm happy that it's done and the gas gauge works. And if you do all of this, you find out your gas gauge isn't working, then you may have to go back there and see what you did wrong. But cool. It's done. All right, guys. So that's it for the video. Hope you like it. If it helped you out, give me a thumbs up and uh, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. And until my next video, guys, I'll see you later.